This is Bryant Myers, author of the book PEMF, The Fifth Element of Health. And this is part two of our video series on the decline of the magnetic field of the Earth. And in the second video, we're going to look at actually why the Earth's magnetic field is currently declining and what you can do to protect yourself. So let's continue where we left off in the last video. We were talking about how pottery acts like a time capsule, which has shown that our Earth's magnetic field has been rapidly declining over the past 300 years compared to the past 5,000 years of that research. We're going to start this video with a May 1988 issue of Scientific America magazine, which detailed today's ongoing degrading of the Earth's once powerful magnetic field, which is now measured at about 50% of its intensity that it was several centuries ago. Scientists calculated if this degradation continues, there will not be a sufficient magnetic field to support life within 1,500 years. So the last 300 years, it has fallen the most. In the article, it even mentioned that the Royal Navy also has detailed logbooks of the Earth's magnetic field over the last 300 years, and it further confirms that it's now an almost proven fact that our Earth's magnetic field has definitely been declining. So there's, there's much evidence from many different areas of research, and even the British Navy. So we know that the magnetic field of the Earth is declining, but the question is why? Possibility number one is that maybe the Earth's core is cooling. Let's take a look at that possibility. Moving liquid is critical to the outer core for the electrons to move around. And if the core cooled, then the dynamo would slow down. This inner dynamo that's creating the magnetic field of the Earth would slow down. Mars is a much smaller planet, and it's colder, so it cooled off quicker. And that's how, actually, Mars' magnetic field did become extinct, is that the core cooled, the currents failed to continue to circulate, and the magnetic field disappeared. Will what happened to Mars happen to the Earth? The Earth's core is also cooling, but the Earth is much bigger, the core is much hotter, and, you know, we're closer to the sun. But the core is declining, but only at about 100 degrees per billion years. So this means that we have a core that will continue to burn for several billion years into the future. At least, by some experts, at least 2 billion years we're safe. So that is not the reason that our Earth's magnetic field is declining because our current rate of decline is, is much, much faster than these models of the Earth cooling could possibly predict. So if it's not the Earth's core cooling, what else could it possibly be? The first evidence to explain the decline was actually found in the volcanoes of Hawaii. The volcanic islands of Hawaii, when there's a volcanic eruption and the lava descends down and cools into the Pacific Ocean, just like the clay, when we talked about the clay pottery, the lava will cool and because of the iron deposits in the lava, those deposits become magnetized both in the intensity that's related to the intensity of the earth, but also the direction of the magnetic field. And we can see millions of years sort of worth of history of the earth's magnetic field because as you dig deeper through the lava, you can go backwards in time and really see the magnetic field and how it's changed over the past millions of years. And what we find is something very interesting, is that the magnetic field of the Earth actually switches polarity on average every 300,000 years or so. What this evidence also found was that there has not been a pole reversal in about 780,000 years. So we're actually much, much overdue. Again, this evidence goes backwards in time. When we talk about a pole reversal... We're not talking about the actual physical Earth flipping upside down. That's a pole shift. Sometimes people use the terminology incorrectly. A pole reversal is when the magnetic north and south switch polarity. And our sun actually switches magnetic polarity every 12 years or so, almost like clockwork. But the Earth is a much slower and more chaotic. It's not as regular based on the evidence. And there's further evidence to support this on the ocean floor. Because through plate tectonics, you know, we know the Earth's plates do in continental drift. We know that they move and shift. And in certain areas where the plates are moving apart from each other, you have like matter from the Earth's core, just like a volcano, you know, there's little outlets from the Earth's core to the ocean floor as well. And those find their way to the ocean floor and they'll cool and also become polarized to the current magnetic field of the Earth 
in both the direction and the intensity, just like the lava cooling in the ocean around Hawaii. And there's been evidence in many other areas around the world where scientists have seen this pole reversal on average every 300,000 years. And again, it's been about 780,000 years since the last pole reversal. The next very interesting piece of evidence comes from computer simulations. And these computer simulations actually further explain why an impending pole reversal would actually cause the magnetic field to be weaker as it's approaching. NASA did some computer simulations using a model of Glatzmeier and Roberts, and their findings were published in Nature magazine. And it's very, very fascinating. And you can see from this the images here, I'm going to show you a little animation. The tubes represent the magnetic field lines, the blue when the field points towards the center, the yellow is when it points away. So you can see, kind of follow those field lines. And the dense clusters of lines are within the north and south because that's where the field is the strongest. So these computer simulations involve dozens of equations that were solved using supercomputers over four years, to basically to see how the magnetic field of the Earth would evolve. What they found was that it did reverse polarity every 100,000 years or so, and when it reversed, the magnetic field always became weaker before the reversal and during the reversal. So reversals are always heralded by a weakening magnetic field. And they also start with magnetic anomalies, which are patches where the field lines are going in the wrong direction. You can see from this image that the normal flow of the magnetic field on the Earth is where the field lines go out the South Pole and then into the North Pole. But what's happening right now is there's a South Atlantic anomaly. And the South Atlantic anomaly is showing fields that are going in the wrong direction. Where they should be going out, they're going in. And you can see this in this image here, that big red spot, that big red patch is where the field's going in the wrong direction. And just like you have water moving in one direction, if you counter that with the water flowing in the opposite direction, you're going to slow down and weaken the stream. And that's exactly what's happening. One of the explanations why our magnetic field is declining right now. So we're definitely long overdue for a pole reversal. And there's certainly evidence that it's happening, not only with the South Atlantic anomaly, but the wandering of the North and South Poles. They're just you know, moving around more and more every year. So what would happen during a pole reversal? The good news is that from an aesthetic point of view, there'd be more auroras. You know, the aurora borealis, if you've ever had the pleasure of seeing that, which I have myself, it's incredibly breathtakingly beautiful. But the bad news is that there'd be more cosmic radiation at the ground level, and we would be getting less and less magnetic field. Even though the magnetic field's weak right now, it'll continue to get weaker as the poles reversed. And this kind of then ties into what's called magnetic deficiency syndrome, which is a condition resulting from insufficient Earth's magnetic fields. So magnetic deficiency syndrome, there was a paper published in 1976 in Japan Medical Journal by Dr. Kiyochi Nakagawa. And he's one of the world's top authorities on magnetism and its therapeutic effects on the human body. He claims that the Earth's degrading magnetic field combined with mankind's electronic environment is responsible for this magnetic field deficiency syndrome. Dr. Nakagawa found symptoms such as chronic pain and sleep disorders became magnified when the body tests too low for the Earth's pulsating magnetic fields. Japanese industrial workers who spend long hours inside metal buildings that block our Earth's natural magnetic field began to show the following symptoms based on Dr. Nakagawa's research. And this is what he looked at, is these industrial workers that were basically shielded from the Earth's natural magnetic field. He noticed insomnia, decreased energy, dull aches, and general body pains. And the installation of artificial magnetic fields alleviated these symptoms. So magnetic field therapy and pulse magnetic therapy is the cure for magnetic field deficiency syndrome, which of course makes perfect sense. With the decline of the Earth's magnetic field and an impending pole reversal, investing in an Earth-based PMF device may not only be wise, but an essential survival tool because the Earth's natural PEMFs is an essential element, as I explain in detail in my book, PEMF, The Fifth Element of Health. With seven years' experience helping thousands of people, I can confidently say to you that you will notice more energy, better sleep, and less pain almost immediately using a PEMF therapy device, especially a device that's inspired by the Earth's natural intensities and frequencies. Thanks for listening, and for more information, go to my website, PEMFbook.com. You can instantly download three free chapters there. 
I always welcome your questions, comments, and feedback. Get in touch with me at pmfbook.com forward slash contact. I sincerely hope the information in these videos will help you in your quest for greater health, happiness, and well-being.